What's up, YouTube? Night Dead here again. Got another little uh, review for you, courtesy of Mr. Eddie. Um, go check him out. He's on Instagram, Mr. Eddie underscore 411. Did a massive unboxing on that live stream uh, last Saturday with uh, a bunch of knives that uh, Mr. Eddie sent me in to take a look at for review. And uh, this is one of them. And otherwise, I definitely would have not been able to take a look at some of these. These are some pretty nice knives. Uh, this is a Medford. This is the Medford Praetorian Slim. Um, this particular one's an S45VN. If you look at the blade, you can see that four there. Whenever you're dealing with a Medford, they're kind of kind of coated. Um, four means S45VN, and um, nine I think is S90V, and so on. Uh, D is D2, so they're kind of uh, kind of coated like that a little bit. But uh, it's got a PVD coating on the blade, and a really really super nice. Uh, like a bronze anno, uh, faded bronze anno um, on the handles, titanium handles. So anyway, we're going to talk all about it, get into it. Let me go ahead and get the size specs out of the way here. So for this one in particular, now most people think Medford, you know, you're dealing with an overbuilt knife and this one is pretty overbuilt, but it's actually kind of like, uh, it's really slim. I mean, like it says in the name, Praetorian Slim. Pretty, uh, pretty small for a Medford, really. So from the tip of the blade right there to the end of the handle, you're looking right at seven and five eighths. Um, blade length, you're looking at three and a half. If you go all the way back here to where it meets up with the handle at on the bottom. And uh, cutting edge, you're looking right at three and three eighths on the cutting edge. So still what I would consider, um, you know, a full size knife. Uh, even though it's smaller than a bunch of its counterparts, but a lot of its counterparts are massively overbuilt and huge knives. Not saying that this one's, you know, not an overbuilt knife. It is large by a lot of comparisons, but compared to a regular Medford, Medford it's smaller. Uh, you're looking at 124 thousandths on the thinnest part, the spine there behind the edge. It goes all the way down. Let's see, I'm going to go right there where that edge begins, or yeah, where that, that edge bevel begins at. You're looking right at 29 and a half thousand, so pretty thick, but uh, still slices, you know. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people said that, you know, even the thin Medford, Medfords won't slice, and that, that's kind of, you know, that's not true. So you're looking at 393 thousandths on the handle thickness, too. Now, it's pretty thin, especially, uh, Especially whenever you consider that a lot of Medfords are way larger than that. So go ahead and get size comparisons out of the way here. Give you a good idea of what you're looking at. That's uh, uh, Doug Ritter, Ritter Hogue, RSK, MK1. Um, so, yeah, looking at it, uh, it's actually a little shorter in overall length than the RSK, MK1. Now your cutting edge... It looks like the RSK MK1 is right at it with cutting edge, too. Um, cutting edge on the DECA falls a little short, but overall length, it's about the same as the DECA, which is kind of crazy. So, uh, it's like definitely utilizes every inch of blade that it's got there. So, that's the Ontario Rat Model 1, Ontario Rat Model 2. Um, you know, definitely you can kind of see the same pattern right there closer in overall size i'd say to the rat too right but uh as far as cutting edge goes definitely got the rat to beat and last but not least we got the spider co paramilitary 2 all right and the spider co pair of three so definitely shorter than the paramilitary 2 especially if you go by overall length right uh, right around the same size as the pair of three. Maybe, yeah, it's a little longer than the pair of three. Uh, cutting edge definitely has a pair of three built. Uh, pair of three beat. Uh, actually, the cutting edge on the Medford is longer than the whole cutting edge, than the whole blade on the pair of three. Maybe even, let's see. Yeah, it's not, as far as cutting edge goes, it's got the paramilitary two beat also. So, definitely utilizes the space that it's got, I'd say. And let's see, we'll do one more size comparison with uh, other Medfords. These are some other ones that Mr. Eddie let me borrow. Um, this is the Medford M&P Scout. More along the, uh, more along the classical sense, uh, 
size of a Medford, right? Huge, humongous, overbuilt knife, right? Um, so you got that one. And then you got, let's see, this one is the, the Slim Midi. One of my favorite ones. Um, yeah, so not too far off from the size of the Slim Midi, but still smaller than the Slim Midi, right? Um, as far as cutting edge goes, they're about the same, it looks like. As far as blade length goes, the Slim Midi might have it beat a little bit, but uh, the handle is less broad on that one, right? So, put these up. I still got to do four reviews on those, too. I just thought it'd be good to, to take the Medford, you know, get all the Medfords that I got together while I got them here. So, let's get the scale out. I can find it. There we go. And see what we're dealing with with weight here. 3.8 ounces, so a little over the ounce and inch, uh, you know, kind of rule of thumb, but not too far over, right? So not really, uh, not really an issue there. I mean, it looks like it's heavier than it is to me anyway. Put the scale back up. And i tell you what, for... A supposedly overbuilt knife from an overbuilt knife company. This thing is surprisingly easy to ma manipulate. I really like it. Um, you know, I, I was surprised the first time I, I flipped it open. I was like, man, Medford is supposed to be slow and clunky and all that. And uh, turns out this thing is actually pretty good um, as far as smoothness goes. So it's a frame lock too, by the way. It locks out perfectly fine. Get the... Blue jeans out. So, as you can see, it doesn't deep carry. Um, you still got that much sticking out, right? So, still got a good little bit sticking out. Definitely not a deep carry for those that, and it does lock in pretty smooth. So, that's a good thing. And uh, the screws are outside of the clip. So, one good thing about that is you don't have to worry about it. Uh, about those screws snagging up your your pants. Go ahead and do the hardware on this bad boy. I think I got the right size here. Let's make sure. That's a T8. This one a T10. Nope. All right. So this is a T8. Yeah, T8 on those two body screws. Flip it over. Let's try out the clip. T8, I think. Well, let me try that T10 just in case. No. I think that's a T8. Yeah, yeah that's definitely a T8. Yeah, T8. 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 And for the pivot, what I think it is, had to get out the other uh, Torx, the other Torx tool that I got here. This is a T25. All right. And yep, yeah, T25. <laughs> that is crazy. So that's awesome. Uh, T8 all the way around, T25 on that pivot. Looks like it's not a single-sided pivot, right? It, it's not captive, so, and, and maybe it has a D-shaped pivot barrel. I'm not sure, but um, it doesn't look to be a captive pivot. But the fact that there's minimal hardware and the uh, the other hardware on it is T8, that's definitely a good thing. And I believe, let me double-check before I put the hardware stuff up. I think this disc here on the... This disc is like an over-travel stop, right? Yeah, that's T6. So that's the only T6 you got on the whole thing. Not a big deal. I mean, I can live with that for sure. You know, um, just got to be careful if you're adjusting it, not to strip it out. So, um, yeah, the, the purpose of that is whenever you push that out, that kind of keeps it in, that makes sure that this lock doesn't over-travel onto the handle. 
So that's a definitely a quality thing. That's a good thing to have. So as far as action goes, this thing is super smooth. Um, I believe it's actually running on bearings, which is surprising considering it's a Medford. Um, if it's not running on bearings, it would shock me. As most Medfords, most Medfords are on phosphor bronze, right? But I think this actual particular one, the Praetorian Slim, I think this one seems to be riding on bearings. And if it's not, it would really surprise me because it's pretty smooth. Um, it's not, you know, dropping, falling shut, but it does have a smooth action that kind of makes it feel like it's running on bearings. Um, that's the only thing on the blade. You got the model serial number right there. And on the other side, you got the Medford logo, the M. And like I said earlier, that four is for S45VN. They do make these and S35VN and other steels. Um, right now, I think there's a few different ones available on DLT trading, actually. So they're not uh, totally unavailable. They, they are costly. You know, these are, this is an all American made product. Um, pure American made product, you know, so you, you definitely get what you pay for. It's a quality product. Um, I would classify this kind of like as a mid tech, you know, um, I think on Medford's website and, uh, classifies it as something else, not a custom, not a mid tech, but there's another word, the like hand tech maybe or something he uses for it. But, um, I've watched the whole video on, uh, or one of the videos on how they make these in the factory and his, uh, in his shop, you know, and it's pretty neat. You know, there's a lot of hand, there's a lot of hand make, uh, handmade stuff here. A lot of, uh, a lot of human touch, you know, going into it. It's not like all this is stamped out on the machine, you know? Um, so they do use machines to make them, which is why you can't really say that it's a, a full handmade custom, but, uh, they do, you know, really, really, uh, really good work, really detailed, really hands-on reverse flick it. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but uh, you can get, get your middle finger on that fuller right there. You can reverse flick that open pretty pretty easy. Um, you know, of course, you can slow roll it out, you know, regular, just, you know, open it regular. Or um, there is a way you can use that as a front flipper. Now, this is actually a glass breaker right there. That's what that is. And uh, I have not tried that out yet, but I'm sure... That it will work just fine for breaking glass. Let me see. I suck at front flipping. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I can kind of front flip it open. Yeah, a little bit. Probably had probably had to have some practice to uh to get good at front flipping that open. Um, my preferred opening method and one that works really good is uh you know the regular reverse flick like that works pretty good uh this thing's pretty comfortable pretty ergonomic like i said this is anode titanium they have all kinds of different anode colors and um you know a few different steels that these come in really slicey blade let me get a piece of paper out just to prove that it'll it will slice you know probably help if i held the paper the right way right but uh, yeah, it, it will definitely, it'll definitely slice. Might be a little nick in it right there or something. Yeah, definitely will slice, no problem. You know, and uh, I think that's still the factory edge that Mr. Eddie has on it there. But uh, no problem slicing with that thing. And... For such an overbuilt looking, larger looking knife, it is incredibly, incredibly lightweight and incredibly slicey in my book. Now, you know, there's a, it's not like a bug out, you know, I mean, I probably wouldn't carry it, you know, if I was running or, you know, wearing gym shorts or something like that, you know, um, but it is a pretty good carry for pretty much everything else. You can almost, you know, you could even carry this to, you know, like a dinner or, you know, if you wear dress pants, something like that, you know, I mean, just bear in mind, you know, what, whoever you're around will be looking at when you pull it out, you know, it looks like a big honking overbuilt knife because it kind of is, but also it's kind of fancy too, right? 
So uh, that's something else to keep in mind. But uh, yeah, and also with the clip, you know, you will have a little bit sticking out. So I would definitely recommend this knife. Now this, like I said earlier, that it is pricey. Um, I think the cheapest versions of the Praetorian Slim, the ones I looked at anyway, um, DLT has the, the most of them. The cheapest versions I saw were like 585, you know, and they go up into the six, 700s, you know. Um, I think this particular version with the black PVD on the S45VN and the uh, kind of anno job, bronze anno, faded bronze anno on the handle, on the titanium handle. For this particular one, I think uh, right around 655 is what this is running right now on uh, DLT, which is, you know, definitely no small chunk of change. I mean, that's a, it's a good bit of money, you know. So um, definitely something to keep in mind. But it is a mid-tech. It is a full American-made product in-house um, by Medford Knife and Tool. So anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much it for today. Appreciate everybody watching, um, everybody that has supported the channel, like Mr. Eddie, and uh, it's thanks to people like him that I get to bring you knife content like this, because otherwise I'd never be able to handle really nice stuff like this. So uh, thank you, Mr. Eddie, for sending this in for us to check out, and um, please go give him a follow on Instagram, and uh, check it, check him out. He's got some pretty cool stuff. He also, ma he also makes some pretty cool looking custom knives, too, by the way. There's one of them right there um, that he sent me. So, yeah, he, he does some really good work and uh, takes some pretty good pictures. And he's got an awesome knife collection, too. So go give him a follow on Instagram. Um, but that's pretty much it. Medford, Praetorian Slim. Appreciate everyone watching and uh, everybody that supported the channel. And until next time, I'll see you later.